Hello, my name is John, and today we'll be reading Making the Best of a Bad Nuclear Hand. Trump Deals with the Leadership Failure Obama Left Behind by David King, The Washington Times, August 14, 2017. David Keene is editor-at-large at The Washington Times. That so many of the nation's leading Democrats believe President Trump poses a greater threat to world peace than the mad dog leader of a nuclear, nuclearized North Korea says more about them than either the President or Kim Jong-un. Take Democrat National Committee Deputy Chairman and Minnesota Representative Keith Ellison, who in a speech last week urging his leftist followers to reignite a grassroots anti-war movement, contended that the North Korean dictator has acted more responsibly in recent days than Mr. Trump. Even though Mr. Ellison later told a reporter that he wished he hadn't said what he did, not because it wasn't true, but because his words could be used against him, one suspects he actually believes the president he despises is worse than a tyrant who says he's li he likes to incinerate us. As Mr. Ellison spoke, tens of thousands of North Korean soldiers were marching in the streets of Pyongyang in a show of support for their crazed leader who was once again warning that he can reduce the U.S. mainland to ashes at any moment. Perhaps, though, he might only launch against a U.S. airbase in Guam or some other target that will allow him to kill Americans, or decide to finally go after his enemies in Seoul or Tokyo, for wherever else he fears they might be hiding. If it were just Mr. Ellison siding with the North Korean dictator, it might be possible to dismiss the man as a fool. If that were the case, one would expect other leading Democrats to demand that he resign his party post and apologize not just to the President of the United States, but to the American people as a whole, or at least to the people of Guam, who have a far less sanguine view of those threats from Pyongyang. Don't hold your breath. Susan writes, President Obama's national security advisor and UN ambassador, even after admitting that her boss's attempts to keep North Korea from going nuclear could be fairly characterized as a failure, now says we can live with a nuclear North Korea. The fact is, she told CNN, that despite all those efforts, the North Korean regime has been able to succeed in progressing with its program both nuclear and missile. That's a very unfortunate outcome, but we are where we are. Miss Rice also wrote a commentary published on Thursday in the New York Times that said Mr. Trump should soften his rhetoric and accept a nuclear North Korea. History shows that we can, if we must, tolerate nuclear weapons in North Korea the same way we tolerated the far greater threat of thousands of Soviet nuclear weapons during the Cold War, Miss Rice wrote. It will require being pragmatic. She went on not only to criticize Mr. Trump's rhetoric, but the United Nations for exacerbating the situation by increasing the sanctions on North Korea. Her advice, like that coming from most Democrats today, is to blame the current incumbent in the White House for the problem. From now on, she urges, everyone must simply accept the fact that we will have to live with a rogue regime headed by an irrational madman capable of inflicting catastrophic destruction on this country if he gets up on the wrong side of his bed one morning. Mr. Trump, most Americans, and even nations like China and Russia, view that as unacceptable. The president's rhetoric, echoing President Harry Truman's to the Japanese before Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 
seems calculated to reestablish the credibility of a U.S. willingness to use military force when our vital national interests are at stake. His words aren't likely meant for the lunatic governing North Korea, but his Chinese neighbors who, if they actually believe Mr. Trump is serious, have the ability to restrain Pyongyang, something President Obama was never able to get them to do. It's a dangerous, high-stakes game, but Mr. Trump and his advisors know they have to play as best they can. The bad hand dealt them as a result of failed policies while ignoring advice from the architects of failure, urging them to simply throw in their hand. Earlier this month, the United Nations Security Council voted unanimously to put in place new sanctions on North Korea. In her CNN interviews, Ms. Rice actually blamed the UN move, coupled with military exercises, for the confrontation. While some play the blame game, the president is left with responsibility of dealing with the fallout. Hopefully, just the political kind. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker and you could reach me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God richly bless you.